you'll have this on the, the chapter of uh, we we took two chapters of two sections I mean the section of let me say to you with the number of pages better an anxiety disorder okay an anxiety disorder it has two presentations, two PowerPoint presentations. They are uploaded on the internet, on the Classera. And focus with me. The third part of your quiz is, you know, somatoforum disorder and dissociative disorder will take on somatoforum disorder only. Again, the second, we took two sections in. Today we will finish the second section. We took an anxiety disorder and I divided this in an anxiety disorder into two parts and two presentations, two PowerPoint presentations. So an anxiety disorder, two presentations. And the second second section, which is section number three, somatoforum disorder and dissociative disorder. We'll only take, take somatoforum disorder. Do not study dissociative disorder that we will take today, no. Again, section two, an anxiety disorder, two PowerPoints, and somatoforum disorder, one PowerPoint. You will only study three PowerPoints. Do not study from the book. Okay? Miss, so section one, you don't study it? It's we didn't easy. take section one in, in this, in this uh, chapter. Oh, so section two, it's two PowerPoints, and section three, only the first point. Yes, only the somatoforum disorder. Yes, uh, three PowerPoints are Yes, uploaded. three PowerPoints, they are uploaded there. You will find five PowerPoints uploaded, but we will stick for three only, which no, are no, two, an anxiety, two anxiety yeah. disorders and one somatoforum disorder. Good morning. Good morning. Two an anxiety disorders and one somatoforum disorder only. Okay. Do, do not take what the chapter and the page. Okay, chapter is chapter is chapter fifteen. A chapter, I'm sorry, chapter sixteen. Chapter sixteen. Sec, it is written in weekly plan, but I just want to tell you that do not study dissociated that order that we will take today. So it will not be too much for you. So you'll only study chapter sixteen, section two. All of section two and section three, somatoforum disorder only. So only three PowerPoints. Done? Yes. Shall I send you an email after I finish? Just if I remind me and I will send you an email to remind you. Study the PowerPoint only, the three PowerPoints. Two an anxiety disorders and one somatoforum disorder. Okay, so let's start. Today we'll take the dissociative disorder. It's on page section three, page 40, 462. Previous time, girls, we started the section. The section was somatoforum disorder and dissociative disorder. Somatoforum disorder that we discussed previous time, when there is a function in the body doesn't work well. When Part there is a part in the body doesn't function well, doesn't function properly. The two sec it is divided into two categories. Number one, number one is a conversion disorder. Conversion disorder when there is really something wrong with the body. Yani she cannot stand on her legs. She really can't stand on her legs. She really can't stand on her legs. But her legs are fine. But psychologically, she cannot stand on her legs. She cannot use her legs well. Okay, although that there is nothing wrong with her legs. And then we have the hypochondriasis. The hypochondriasis is when what when we when when the person when the person is fine, one hundred percent fine, but he imagined to have diseases, serious diseases, serious illness. Then we'll take today something which is so interesting. Dissociative disorder. Dissociative disorder. I will share my PowerPoint with you. Uh, 
Uh, can you see my PowerPoint? Yeah. This is sheet of this order. OK. A person may experience being lost in a daydream or failing to notice your friend calling your name. It is normal. It happens to you when, when you just get so deep in thinking of any subject, so you do not notice what happens around you. OK. Understand? Sometimes it happens with us or not. That you do not notice if the teacher calls your name, if your mom calls you. It happens like dreaming or thinking of something deeply. Involves more significant breakdown in a person's normal conscious experience, such as loss of memory or identity. So when it gets deeper, here it starts to have problems. Dissociative amnesia. First thing we will face is dissociative amnesia. Dissociative amnesia, girls, is a try or an attempt to escape from the problems by blotting them out completely. Amnesics, those people who suffer from dissociative amnesia, you know what is the, the meaning of amnesia? Amnesia is a loss of memory. Um, yes. Amnesia, girls, is a loss of memory. So dissociative amnesia is when the person tries to, if he faces a problem, if a woman finds out that her husband is cheating on her, she tries to forget, okay? She tries to forget. So when she tries hard to forget, she loses her memory, okay? She loses her memory with this. There are two kinds. There is a person who is driving his car and then he hits the car and then he get, uh, he had a very bad accident. So he gets, huh, gets uh, a brain damage. He gets a brain damage. This is something physically. When he forgets his memory, it is something physically. As we watch in movies, someone who forgot his memory, lost his memory, what happened to him? He had an accident. So it is something physically because we know that the brain controls all of our body, all of our uh, thoughts is in the brain. The brain is the main, the control of our whole body. So what is the part that makes us remember the the brain? So if if Allah for, forbid if someone had uh, an accident, he may so have a brain damage and then gets a uh, to lose his his memory, but here we are not talking about those who face uh, who uh, happened to had an accident. No, we are talking about those who faced a problem. Okay, a big problem in their life, maybe a loss of someone they love, and they do not want to know. They do not want to confess that the one they love has died or passed away, or her husband cheated on her or they lost his money, all his money. So he tries to forget. It depends on the brain. When you forget or you remember, it's in your brain. When you try to forget, 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 you forget or they forget, I mean, uh, the, their memory too, the memory. So they know how to write, they know how to read, they know how to speak. They know their general knowledge, and if, if uh, they know that there are countries, Egypt, uh, Syria, and the uh, Jordan, United States, they know the countries, they know the places, they maybe know about politics, but they may not know who they are. They may forget their, their, their personality. It's amnesia. What is amnesia? Amnesia is loss of memory. Dissociative amnesia is loss of memory. Okay? This is disorder. This, what is the meaning of disorder? Why you say somatoform disorder and anxiety disorder? Order and disorder. It means that there is something wrong happened in the order of that. Of If a person suffers from an anxiety disorder, an anxiety, not only an anxiety, no, worse than an anxiety. So here, not only amnesia, worse than an amnesia. Amnesia is a loss of memory, a complete loss of memory. Okay, 
So dissociate, this is dissociative disorder. Okay, you understand it, Grace? Yeah. Okay. Yes. When yes. the person, yes, when the person uh, forgets his uh, personality. Then we have dissociated fuge. Dissociated fuge. Listen, amnesia is when you lose your, when they lose their memory. Are you with me, girls? Uh, wait a minute. I want to to see who is with us. Are you here? All here? Yes, you're all here, right, girls? You're 22. Yes. 21 means. Okay, so you are all with me. It, it, it is an interesting topic, Yanni, even if for uh, for just... Uh, yes, dear. Good morning. Good mo Who says good morning? But I told you good morning from the first time I started the So you good morning. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Asma. Uh, all yeah. of you, good morning, guys. I'm, I'm sorry if I didn't notice. Uh, it is a very interesting topic, by the way. Okay, so we finished dissociative amnesia. You understand it, girls? Dissociative amnesia? Yes. Then we go to dissociative fuge. What is fuge? Fuge is... Uh, what is fuge, girls? Do you know what is the, f the meaning of fuge? Hmm? Fuge, like when you just look at somebody and you like keep on looking at him, like shrewd. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. It is also a loss of memory. Okay, also a loss of memory. But what happens in dissociative fuge? Amnesia is coupled with active flight to a different environment. So he suffers from amnesia. Dissociative fuge is a person who suffers from amnesia. He forgets his memory. He loses his memory. But he travels from a place to another or from an environment to another. A lost one would establish a new identity, a new life. He will get uh, married, start a new job, start a new life, lives another life. Eventually, if he comes back to his normal life or first life, he forgets what happened during this period of fuge. Okay, Gris? So we have dissociative, dissociative dis, uh, amnesia. And dissociative fuge, fuge, when he leaves, when he leaves, opens the door, and he goes out of the door and lives another life. You understand me, girls? Yes. Then we will go to dissociative identity disorder, and this is the most interesting part. Dissociative identity disorder, which we can call multiple personality disorder. When a person has more than one personality, as discussed in movies, like the movie Splat, you know Splat? You watch Splat? You know the movie Splat, girls? I will show you this picture. Do you have yes, you heard it before? Yes. yes. How but many characters this uh, Splat had? Seven yeah. characters. The same, uh, the same uh, guy has many characters. Yes. Here is it. I'll show you. Here, can, do you see it? This, you see my yeah. my uh, YouTube, my uh, Google. Yes. Here goes. This is the movie Splat. He had more than one character. He had seven characters in the movie. Yes. So how? Ah, uh, here is it. Here are the two, four, six, seven. How can a person have seven characters, eight characters? What happens? This is called. This is our topic today. This is what's called dissociative identity disorder. He has a problem with his identity. When a person has two or more different personalities, 
and they take control at different times. They start with this, this, this. Okay. And then the, the most uh, prominent case of multiple personality disorder was the, uh, Eve, a person whose her name was Eve. I will show you her uh, video now. Okay. What happens with Eve? She had more than one personality. Okay, they suffered physical, psychological, or sexual abuse during their childhood. Those people who have multiple personality disorders, they faced the problems when they were young. Those problems, those unhandled problems, when you face a problem and you, you do not don't solve it, you keep it inside of yourself, like a sexual abuse when you were young, sexual harassment, okay, physical pain or psychological pain, and they are not treated, they will what uh, get what get bigger inside you, increase. If you do not handle this problem, they will increase inside you and they will at last cause you psychological problems, which will lead you then to physical problems because as we said, psychological problems are main reasons for many physical problems. Okay, dissociative disorders, people with dissociative disorders have learned to dissociate themselves from such stressful events by selectively forgetting them, thereby reducing the anxiety they feel. If a very shy person, a person who has been bullied by his friends, has been hit by his friends, and he, he gets so annoyed, so depressed, so another part of his personality appears. Uh, an aggressive part, so he becomes two, do two persons. One time is that shy boy, and sometimes is that ha, ha, uh, rough boy who likes to hit others. What is the reason? What is the reason? Stressful events. I'll show you the first one, first movie. This is. Eve. Eve was the first case. That's your first time. Girls, can you hear? When I played it, can you hear? Yes, we can. Are you feeling well these days? I feel tired. Feel tired? You felt tired for some little time, haven't you? Yes. I see. Do you hope and expect that this will all soon be terminated? Yes. How do you feel about that? I think Jane will be the one. You feel that she will be the one? Yes. How do you feel personally about it, though? Well, it's just something that's got to be. Do you I want to get well, and if that's the only way to get well, that's the way I want it. Do you feel that you will be in any part of it? No, I don't feel that way. Does it cause you distress? In a way, I worry about Sarah. You feel that she may not be taken care of? Yes. I see. Do you regret going, or what's your feeling about it? No. I'm tired. Can I speak with Eve Black now? Sure. Eve Black? How you feel? Yeah, good. Good. Why? I don't know. Did you enjoy the trip over today? Yeah. It was 
disappointing, though, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah, you know, I, I thought we'd just zoom through space and then we were just creeping along like a little cat. I didn't even feel like I was moving. That's your first airplane ride? How do you like all this? I think it's real exciting. Do you? Don't you? Yeah, it's very interesting. I guess it is interesting in a way. I think it's more exciting than interesting. How long have you been out? Huh? How long have you been out? Do you mean in all? Mm-hmm. Off and on all my life. All your life. You remember some things that happened in your childhood? Yeah. You remember things that happened to Eve White? Mm-hmm. I know everything that happened to us. But you don't seem to have as much educational background. How is that? I guess I just wasn't interested. Why? In getting an education, you have to study. Well, somebody had to study. Not really, no. She didn't have to. Well, she did in order to get an education, didn't she? She wanted one, though, but I didn't. Why didn't you learn as she went along? I guess I just didn't pay any attention. Where were you when she studied? I don't know. Just somewhere. No, no way. But you always knew what was going on. Mm. Did you have trouble coming out? Yeah. Can I speak with uh, Eve White? Sure. Eve White? Feel all right? Can I speak with Jane? Sure. Jane? It is real exciting, Dr. Pickman. <laughs> you enjoyed the trip over Yes, I do. How do you feel about the future? I'm optimistic. Do you think that you will be the surviving one? Or? I think that's difficult to say right now. See, you feel hopeful? Yes, I'd like to live. What do you feel about the little girl? Uh, well, she seems like my own now. Been around her quite a while. I see. You're rather looking forward to it. Yes. You don't mind the responsibilities, mm -hmm. obligations. Mm -hmm. Grace, did you understand what happens here? Yes. Grace. You don't mind the responsibilities, mm -hmm. obligations. Hello, girls. Do you understand what happens here, girls? Yes, yes, ma'am. This is, as as I said for you, this is Eve. And Eve was the prominent case of having more than one personality. Eve reached to 22 personalities, girls. And there is, was another case. Okay, Cybill had 16 personalities. <laughs> And now, Dr. Wilbur, it's getting worse. Who does those drawings? Uh, because the two cases have been reported in a movie, okay? You do. Who would you do them as other people? Do you understand? <laughs> You do them as other parts of yourself. No, I don't. We're still children. No, I don't. It's true. In 1976, millions of Americans watched Sybil, a TV movie based on a blockbuster book of the same name. Sybil really introduced the country to the notion that someone could have multiple personalities. Said to have 16 distinct personalities, Sybil had a story that was emotional and terrifying. It's me. How did you figure figure out that you had this multiple personality disorder. So how did a rarely diagnosed psychological disorder turn into a cultural phenomenon? Sometimes the media is the brilliant hysteric in the mix, and that can be the problem. In the early 1950s, two doctors stunned the public with a patient they called Eve. Eve was a housewife from Georgia who appeared to have three distinct personalities. Could I speak with 
He black man. He black. Okay. No psychiatrist in the United States in 1954 was unaware of this case. Including Dr. Cornelia Wilbur and a patient she was treating in the fall of 1954 named Shirley Mason, who would later become known as Sybil. At the time, Mason was a graduate student living in New York, but she had severe emotional problems that had long seemed to be taking over her life. Dr. David Spiegel's father would see Mason when Dr. Wilbur was on vacation. What we know is there was something seriously wrong. She didn't have a normal life despite being so intelligent. Mason had met Dr. Wilbur nine years earlier in Omaha, Nebraska. Even then, Dr. Wilbur had been interested in multiple personality disorder. And she even recommended that Shirley read a classic book about multiple personality. Then, several months after their therapy began in New York, Mason arrived at Wilbur's office acting different. She came in seeming very little girlish, and she said something like, Hi, I'm Peggy. To explore this further, Wilbur began an aggressive treatment similar to one she had used as a young psychiatrist. Back then, she would delve into the unconscious mind by injecting mentally ill patients with hypnotic drugs, or so-called truth serums. Now she used this technique on Mason. Now you look at me, you begin to hit the One, two, three, and you may go to sleep. Something happened last night at 10 minutes after 10. What happened? She dialed. Who is she? That, that other girl. What's her name? You know her? I don't know her name. Yes, dear, you do. No, doctor, I don't know her name. I don't see her very many times. And what did she say? She talked to me. And what did she talk about? I feel sick. All right, sweetie. What's your name? I'm Shirley. Mm-hmm. She said her name was Shirley. How old are you? Hmm? Eleven. Mm-hmm. So there are two Shirley's, the 11-year-old Shirley and the grown-up Shirley. Right? What stopped you from growing up, sweetie? Sweetie? Dr. Wilbur ultimately identified 16 distinct personalities. There was a little girl who called herself the grandmother. She had a little boy personality named Mike. There was Vicky, and she had another one named Peggy Ann. And Wilbur had a strong suspicion about what caused Mason's other selves. Dr. Wilbur was looking for trauma. She had this idea that something terrible had made Shirley split. She didn't really know what it was, so Shirley would be questioned pretty ruthlessly about things that her mother might have done to her, with a lot of specific suggestions by Dr. Wilbur. And what she, quote, remembered, unquote, was her mother tying her up, sticking implements up her genitals, all kinds of really terrible things. Rather than publishing her findings in a scientific journal, Dr. Wilbur approached a journalist friend, Flora Schreiber, about the possibility of writing a mass market book. She agreed, but only if Mason's personalities had merged. Three years later, Schreiber got a call from Shirley Mason. Flora Schreiber came over to Shirley's apartment and she'd had some sort of a fit. She fell down, writhing, and then jumped up and jumped all over the place. After that, she was integrated. That's the way it was described by Flora Schreiber. She was integrated. Their book, Sybil, sold more than six million copies. You call me sweetie? And the TV movie that followed was a smash hit, turning the story into a sensation. My next two guests uh, have an amazing and frightening story. Uh, will you welcome please Dr. Cornelia Wilbur and Professor Flora Schreiber. This is just one of the most fascinating cases, I guess, that's ever happened in, uh, in psychiatric history. Do you have a feeling that there are a lot more of them that never come to light? Yes, I do. 
that the doctors don't recognize it. Has anybody suggested this is a hoax? He, oh, he needed some had evidence. Uh, hoax has been breathed down our necks by various people at various stages of this project. Actually, experience. it isn't a hoax. Tragically, it isn't a hoax. It would be yeah. much better for Sybil <laughs> and possibly for all of us if it were, because this was dreadful to bear. This is true. It doesn't sound plausible. It doesn't doesn't sound possible, but true, it is. Before Sybil, multiple personality disorder was so rare that only a hundred cases had ever been reported in the medical literature. Less than a decade later, in 1980, the American Psychiatric Association officially recognized the disorder, and the number of patients diagnosed rose into the thousands. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> No. You really believe these are all distinct personalities, different? Oh, without a doubt. You can see it. Today we're talking with people who have been diagnosed with multiple personality disorder. I'd like you to meet Kim. She says she has at least 15 different personalities in her body. Today we'll meet Ray Lynn, a woman raising four kids while struggling with over 300 personalities inside her mind. After the public fascination with this, entire hospital units were turned into treatment centers for multiple personality disorder. Dr. Wilbur, too, would open her own treatment center. Let's talk to Susie. We can begin to grow up. The personalities are all perfectly whole, but they're totally separate people. I came in for depression, and I left with multiple personalities. In the mid-80s, 29-year-old Jeanette Bartha, who had suffered for years with clinical depression, was also diagnosed with multiple personality disorder by her psychiatrist. It was probably our first or second session. He asked me who, who he was talking to. I just said, I, I just feel like a boy. And I was wearing a boy's shirt. And he, his response was, who am I talking to? What's your name? And it was very confusing. I didn't know what he meant. And he just kept saying, who, what's your name? Who am I talking to? So I gave him the first name that popped into my mind. And I said, Danny. Her psychiatrist conducted therapy sessions under hypnotic drugs. Over time, Bartha says she came to believe not only that she had multiple personalities, but that it stemmed from her parents abusing her as members of a satanic cult. Was that when you were inducted into the cult? Yes, I was I would get horribly upset thinking that your parents horrifically abused you was very, very difficult. And I'd take more, more medication in order to cope with that. Bartha would spend six years in and out of mental hospitals. Then, as she started exercising and cutting back on her medication, she says she had a revelation. All of a sudden I said, oh my God, wait a minute, this, this didn't happen. And I just sunk to the floor and I said, what happened, what did I do? Bartha wasn't the only one questioning her diagnosis and the trauma she once believed had caused it. In the 1990s, lawsuits were filed by other MPD patients, many who also linked their disorder to recovered memories of satanic ritual abuse when they realized there was little evidence that such abuse had actually occurred. Many women who went into therapy and developed what are today called false memories develop those around treatment for multiple personality disorder. The notion of hypnotizing people, the notion of calling them by different names to label different aspects of their personality, the notion of using sodium pentothal to get at repressed memories that otherwise would be utterly inaccessible to their conscious mind, that has been so debunked, it's radioactive, even though at one time that was seen as a necessary way to promote healing. Today, MPD is not an official diagnosis. The American Psychiatric Association now calls it Dissociative Identity Disorder, or DID. The MPD thing had gotten to be such a lightning rod in the field as we move into uh, the 1990s uh, and late 80s that uh, it probably was better to make, give it a, a little more boring name, perhaps. Dr. David Spiegel of Stanford University, who headed up the committee that pushed for the change, says that part of the reason was to clear up the public misconception that rose from the name. Multiple personality carries with it the implication that they really have more than one personality. That's what the name says. Dissociative identity disorder implies that the problem is fragmentation of identity, not that you really are 12 people, uh, that you have not more than one, but less than one personality. 
He continues to study and treat the disorder. The way to understand it in everyday life, you know, we're different people when we're at a party, hopefully, than we are when we're at work. These individuals have trouble integrating those aspects. But what about Shirley Mason? Dr. Spiegel remembers that his father doubted she had multiple personalities, and that was nearly 60 years ago. He referred to her as a brilliant hysteric. He felt that Dr. Wilbur tended to pressure her to exaggerate on the dissociation she already had. So she was capable of it. She was very hypnotizable. Dr. Wilbur died in 1992, leaving Mason $25,000 in her will. Not long before Mason's death, six years later, she told a friend that every word in the book was true. I think it's important to look back at Sybil because it's important to understand which stories are true and which are false. Because in some cases, like this one, they're, they're not just stories. I mean, they actually end up affecting the law, affecting mental health, affecting political decisions. And the stuff that sounds the most dramatic and yet the most credible at the same time is probably the most dangerous. Okay, girls, you got the idea, girls? Yeah. You enjoyed the movies? Yes, I did. Uh, dissociative disorders, okay, which is called multiple identity disorder. Yeah. Uh, this woman, by the way, uh, I we are out of time, but I will show you just a small. Uh, yes, dear. Yes, sorry for interruption, but said uh, people with um, multiple personalities can they recover or it's in? Yes, uh, this is what I wanted to show you. Look, where is it? It is oh, the same one. They can recover. They, they even here, there is a video for. I think they can recover by going to a psychiatrist. Yes, of course they have to. By the way, Three Faces of Eve was uh, uh, transferred into a movie. There was a video yesterday and I took its, uh, its link and I shared it here. Oh, here is it, I found it. I, I will show it to you quickly because we are running out of time. Here is the woman after she has been recovered. Can you see the YouTube? The real Eve, Chris Sizemore. Girls, can you see and hear? Moore, who is now 61, continue. Can you see and hear? Yes, yes, yes. Over the next 20 years to develop 19 more personalities. And they continue to come, she says, in groups of three. In the last group, there was one called the Purple Lady. She thought she was 58 years old and she wore bifocals. Coexisting with her was the Strawberry Girl, who thought she was 21 years old and could read from the telephone directory without glasses. Also in that group was the Retrace Lady, and she was the intellectual of the three. Now Mrs. Sizemore has written her own soon-to-be-published book about her recent life as a healthy person and as a mental health advocate. The actress Sissy Spacek wants to buy the rights to this book for a movie, but was stopped by 20th Century Fox, which claims that it owns the rights to Mrs. Sizemore's entire life story. The studio offers as proof a contract Mrs. Sizemore signed in 1956 when The Three Faces of Eve was made. But Mrs. Sizemore says she was mentally ill at the time and points out her four names. Who signed that contract? 
It was a personality that we have referred to as Evelyn Lancaster over the years. Uh, I think that uh, E. Black, E. White, and Jane still were in existence because their name is typed on the document also. Certainly, I did not sign it. Mrs. Sizemore, who was paid $7,000 for her signature, is now suing Fox. Our first position is that the contract does not give them anything more than the right to do her life for the three faces of Eve, period. And second, um, the result would simply be unconscionable. You cannot take someone's life 30 years ago for a very small sum of money and expect to own it for the rest of their natural lives. 20th Century Fox, which declined to be interviewed, has until March 27th, is living peacefully in Florida with her singular self and with the memory of all those others. Today, I know that they are a part of me. So I'm the sum total of all of them. But you know, I think I'm more than that today. I have become my very own person too. When I was just two years old, I saw a man taken from a ditch who apparently had drowned. And I heard the word death, and then I saw the scene that revolved around that. And about two weeks later, I saw a man cut in half at a lumber mill. To help young Chris deal with the horror she'd seen, 22 personalities emerged. They're so real, their tone of voice changes, their facial expressions are different, their skills are different. But seven of the 22 could paint. This was painted by the retrace lady. The Smithsonian offered Chris $125,000 for it. Here's the work of the strawberry girl who only ate strawberries. And this is a self-portrait of the purple lady who saw herself with brown hair and eyes. Chris's art was on display at Charter Hospital recently, including this painting done by Chris. And after 20 years of therapy, all of her personalities have integrated into one. I know I'm the sum total of all 22 of okay, those personalities, girls, uh, but today... I because we have to leave for the next period. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it today, okay? Yes, Bye. thank you. Okay, don't forget what I said to you. Two anxiety disorders, PowerPoint, and somatoform disorder, PowerPoint. See you okay. next week. Bye. See you. Have a nice day.